Coming to you live from Animal Crossing New Horizons, it's the Isabel Show! With your host, Isabel. Tonight, special guest, Evil Ew. What's that I see? Animal Crossing's next big filmmaker? It's you, ACNH player! Wondering how to make your next big movie? Thought making machinimas was too hard for you? Well, think again! Look at you! You have what it takes! I'm revealing all the secrets to making a movie! Lights! Camera! Action! I'm gonna teach it all! Call me, Evil Imp! The world needs to see your Animal Crossing movies! Call me now! Welcome to my Animal Crossing Filmmaking Masterclass. My name is Evil Imp. I make movies in Animal Crossing. Now I made two other tutorials back in 2020 when the game first came out, but since then the game and my methods have changed quite a bit. So I decided to make a third and final tutorial. We're going to start with the camera and lighting in the game. The Pro Camera app was introduced in the 2.0 update. It was a big game changer. The camera now has a bit of a range, from close-ups to wide shots and the ability to shoot different angles. It really added more depth and movement to my videos. The game has come a long way with the camera. When New Horizons first came out, we couldn't even hide the HUD that was on the screen. Now to hide it, we had to use this very complicated camera trick that involved smashing a bunch of buttons with the right timing. I've kind of played with the idea of remaking some of my older videos now that we have all of the new features and more items. I did remake this trailer right here. It's the sci-fi one and the second one that I ever made. But I also feel like my video and sound editing has improved and it's not as cringy as some of my older stuff. So I, I think I'll consider remaking maybe the movie or something else one day. Let's talk about lighting. I think lighting is one of the most important aspects of film. Lighting defines the visuals, the mood, the atmosphere, and overall it sets the tone of the story in many ways. You really want to take advantage of the wide spectrum of natural lighting and weather in the game. Now my favorite times to shoot are the times during sunrise and sunset. For something dark and dramatic, look for rain, thunder, and cloudy days. And this goes for both outdoors and indoors, but the cool thing about the game is that the weather conditions play a big part in how the light looks. So if it's a cloudy day, 6am indoors next to a window is going to look darker than 6am on a clear day. And there's a lot of time traveling involved to find the right light or the weather that you may be looking for. But there is a very handy tool to predict your island's weather. Hi guys! Welcome back to another stream! I hope you're all doing well. Um, I wanted to show you guys this super helpful website, Meteonook Alpha. It's wuffs.org slash acnh slash weather. Now if you record your daily and hourly weather patterns and then put that info on this site, it will provide this weather seed, which is a number that you enter on the site. And if you go to the calendar here, it will tell you if you have a rainy day, meteor showers, Every hour it will tell you the wind speed, where the sun is at. It's a bit tedious to gather this information, but once you do it, it's totally worth it. Thank you for the five gifted sun! These are some of my favorite lights to use inside. Oh, oh, oh. 
Before Happy Home Paradise was released, there were only two lighting options. Now with the DLC, we have a wide spectrum of colors and light levels to choose from. And with the accent walls, we can now bring in natural light for wallpapers that don't have windows. You can also cover them up with partitions for a complete immersive environment. For $24.99, you can expand your horizons with filmmaking essentials that will change your movies. DLC and game sold separately. I record all of the Animalese dialogue in-game. Since Happy Home Paradise's release, I now record the voices either in an empty vacation home or a villager's house where there is no other sound. But you might be saying, hey, I don't have Happy Home Paradise, or hey, I don't want to go through all of that work. Well, you're in luck. I have a Google Drive download link that has access to all of my recorded Animalese dialogue. The download link is in the description and you're free to use it for whatever you'd like. No credit necessary. <laughs> Quiet on set. We're rolling. And action. <laughs> Most of my videos are filmed at Harv's Island. At Harv's, you have access to your whole catalog, six decently sized rooms, and you have control over the villagers. I wish we could change the room sizes like in Happy Home Paradise, because I only use Happy Home Paradise if I want to get a wide shot of a bigger set, or if I have a shot of a villager interacting with an object. In terms of cinematography, I do like wide shots because I feel like they help tell the story with having the set and subject in frame. But I also like close-ups for certain reactions or emotions, but there really isn't a whole lot of movement with villagers. I tend to have a main human character in the story as they can walk and run around, but with villagers, they're pretty static. With only the reactions you give them, unless you film them moving around at Happy Home Paradise or your island. And I often have to cut away if I want to give them a different reaction. Otherwise, I would not have so many cuts in one scene. But since Animal Crossing is pretty static, I think it's kind of necessary so it adds some movement. I also like to shoot at corners of a room or building a set that has lines leading to the subject. And I also like to shoot behind objects. Um, I think all of that adds some depth and makes the shots look more interesting. So I have something to confess. I'm sure some of you have noticed that in my videos you have seen things that you haven't seen in the game. Things like the mermaid tail, certain trees, and some reactions. These are all mods on my second switch that is modded, but you don't need a modded switch to make movies. In fact, I made this tutorial for normal switch players, but I just wanted to say that with a modded switch, it has saved me a lot of time. I can focus more on making a movie instead of spending time playing the game and gathering items, but you don't need a modded switch. In fact, Nintendo doesn't like hacking, so I'm not suggesting it or anything. In fact, I have about 64 videos on my channel right now, and I only have about 10 where I've used some form of a mod on it. But you know, if you're curious to see the wonders of a spicy switch, you can check out these creators who all do wonderful mod work. It's time for questions. What do you use to make your films? Do you use a capture card? If so, what kind do you use? 
Yes, I use an Elgato capture card, but there's a lot of options out there to choose from, so just find one that you think may work for you. You can also record videos on your Switch with the capture button, and it records up to 30 seconds at a time. What was your favorite movie to create and why? My favorite movie to make has been part three of the movie, Animal Forest. It's not my best work, but it's one that I enjoyed making. I made that when the game was still fairly popular, and I have a lot of good memories while making that. Also, Mermaid Crossing Part 1 has been like the first video that I actually had fun while making in a while. It sort of saved me from that Animal Crossing burnout. How long does an average short film or part of a movie take? It depends. The first year the game came out, I was super motivated. I could usually make three to four videos in a month. N now it takes me maybe a month on and off to finish one video, but also my videos on average are longer than they used to be and I just put more time into them now. Where do you get your sound effects? I get them either from YouTube's free audio library or Storyblocks, that's a monthly paid subscription. And if you have the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, it comes with a lot of good sound effects. But there's also a lot of free good ones out there, and also many of the sound effects that I use come from the game directly. After you finish Mermaid Crossing, what are you planning to do next? How do you make several different camera angles on your island when the game limits you? And what do you think this channel will be like in five years? Well, first of all, after I finish Mermaid Crossing, uh, there'll probably be two more parts. I have some ideas for some short films. Um, I've been working on a Dawn movie, you saw a sneak peek earlier. It's going through many different versions, like Dom going to daycare, uh, Dom has a baby, uh, Dom going to summer camp, and now the story is Dom going to prison, so I'm gonna try to work on that one next. With the different camera angles on my island, since you can't rotate the camera outside, I usually build the set like three to four different times and shoot it at different angles. The only thing is that the light and sky in the background doesn't match up for reverse shots, but I think viewers might forgive that. And lastly, what do I think this channel will be like in five years? I'm not sure. I don't... Uh, I didn't even think this channel would still be going after two years, so uh, maybe the next Animal Crossing game will be out by then. <laughs> Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you learned something new, and if you still have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I will answer them as best as I can. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like. It really helps the channel out. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!